Thank you, Jan. The 20th Concours Musical International de Montréal took place from May 31st to June 9th of last year. Its focus was the voice, and two of its laureates are here with us tonight. Soprano Meredith Volgamut and vocal collaborative pianist Ginny Park. They've chosen to bring us songs by Wolf, Schubert, Alison Bolt, Copeland, and Obradors. But before we begin, just a quick reminder that video of the concert tonight can be found at WFMT.com or WFMT's Facebook and YouTube channels. Their program opens with a song cycle by Edvard Grieg. The Six Leader, Opus 48, songs utilizing German texts, and all of them about love, were mostly written in 1889. And they are greeting, these are the songs and translations, One Day My Thoughts, You Shall Be at Rest, that text by Emanuel Geibel, and by the way, the first song's text is by Heinrich Heine. The next song is Run of the World, the text by Johann Ludwig Uhland. Then comes The Secretive Nightingale Under the Linden Tree, and that's to a poem by Walter von der Vogelweide. Then we'll hear Time of Roses, another Goethe text, and finally A Dream, and that text is by Friedrich Bodenstedt. Here are Meredith Volgemuth and pianist Ginny Park. Thank you. 
jedem Abend geh ich aus hin auf den Wiesensteg. Sie schaut aus ihrem Garten raus, er steht dort am Weg. Wir haben uns noch nie bestellt, es ist nur so der Lauf der Welt. Es ist nur so der Thank you. 
The Zex Lieder, Opus 48, by Edvard Grieg. Performed by soprano Meredith Volgemuth and pianist Jimmy Park. There is much more to come from these two. We're going to take a break, though, now, and uh, come back shortly. Jen? Great. Tonight's present.
Thank you, Jan. And we're back in the studio with soprano Meredith Volgemuth and pianist Jenny Park. And they are laureates, as I mentioned, of the Montreal International Concours of last year. Maybe we should talk a bit about that experience, first of all, folks. Um, what was it like? I mean, I know that these competitions are a necessary thing for young artists. Mm. Some can be better than others in terms of the, you know, what what they provide. This one, I understand, has a reputation for warmth, hospitality, and making artists feel very comfortable. Was that yes. your experience too? It was. I mean, you know, it's funny. This was our first competition as a duo, our first one. Um, I know both Jinhee and I have done. Hand, you know, a handful of different kinds of competitions, but this was our first international competition together. So it was, we really had nothing to compare it to, I guess. Um, but it was, everyone was so lovely, so kind. We were so well taken care of. We, everything was so organized. We knew where to go. Um, and we just had such a great time, even before knowing that we won. You know, obviously <laughs> we have great memories because of that, but it was just such a, it, it has so many great memories for both of us from that two weeks being in Montreal. It was really how, how do you prepare for such a thing? Well, I think we applied. So the competition was in June, May, late May, early June. Mm -hmm. We applied in the end of um, the fall, November, December. So we had to already pick our programs and what songs we wanted to sing and everything like that back then. Um, so we picked it. We decided we met a bunch of times kind of, you know, programming takes a lot of time and thought. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was new music for us. It was a mix of old and new. So, um, and then about the month and a half, month before, we were very intensely preparing, rehearsing every day for hours. It seemed like hours, and I think it truly was hours, um, singing and talking about, you know, the text and how we want to interpret it and um, how they all fit together. So, yeah, it really did take a lot of time. And again, you know, it was it was our first one, so we were also learning how to do it as we were preparing. When you get up there, do you get a fair amount of rehearsal time to actually do it in the hall or We did we did get maybe an yeah, you know, we had sound check time yeah. and we had but not not a whole lot, no. You know, for Jinhee, I know getting used to the piano, um, you only get a certain amount of time, but that's kind of how they go. For me, my voice is, you know, usually the same, but <laughs> <laughs> getting used to, you know, the different um, climate and things like that. You spoke briefly about putting together the program and the thought process that goes into it, and I wanted to talk a bit about tonight's program and how mm -hmm. you put that together, and perhaps more specifically about this next set of songs we're going to hear. Um, yeah. There's music of Wolf and Schubert, lots of that. There's also mm -hmm. music by a contemporary composer from yes. Australia. Yes. So tell us what went into this. Yeah. So I'll let Jinhee start talking about this a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, yeah, as, as Merit said, um, our rehearsal process was mostly about discussion. Um, how do we interpret this text? And how do we apply this interpretation to music? How, how can we make sense of all these different composers, different programs, and then everything. And then we realize that we become so stronger when we have our own narratives. So from beginning to the end, no matter what program is in the it, it, each round, we made a specific scenes. It's almost like a movie. Mm -hmm. So we, we knew exactly what kind of scene we were in. So we were really, we can focus and we can really zone in no matter where we sing, where we perform. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess we were strong, so, so <laughs> it, we, worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. And then we, um, before this recital, this um, ready recital, we met once and then talked about this program, new programs. How are we gonna, you know, pick new things and then put, put things around mm -hmm. and then, you know what? We were really good at um, making our own narrative. And for example, Grieg, he made sad song set by different poets. And he picked the, all different uh, poems and then he put it together and then that's a set, yeah. right? Now we're like, oh, why can we, why don't we do that? So we picked our uh, favorite songs here and there and then made our own narratives. 
narrative uh, storytelling from the beginning of Wolf to the end of uh, Nacht und Träume Schubert. It's 30 minutes long. Um, it's unusual uh, order of the songs. It mm. goes back and forth, the time period, and then even the countries back and forth. But it's, it has our um, human's emotional, emotional journey there. It has love, of course, love, hope, despair, despair or excitement, or mm. longing. And I thought it's, it's very um, universal. It doesn't matter which time period you live. You, you, can, you can talk about it with, for example, Wolf or Goethe, mm -hmm. doesn't matter, Schubert, and then we just picked all this universal language mm -hmm. <laughs> and then made our own set, 30-minute set. Mm -hmm. And nature is a big part of this, too. Yes, yeah. nature is a huge part of it. And going further off of what you just said, so the Alice and Bald Ophelia's Lament. Um, so that's definitely our most modern piece on the program, our newest piece from 2014. Um, and it's kind of at the center of this whole set, if you will, the idea of the character of Ophelia, which is something we've, we've kind of researched and played with a lot this last year, for example, like the Strauss setting. Um, and so that's actually at the heart of it. This whole set is kind of inspired by the character of Ophelia. Mm -hmm. So as we're performing this, you know, it's not necessarily all in her voice. The, the lament is definitely her monologue, is really like a sung monologue. Uh, word for word in English. And, but the Wolf and the Schubert, the other ones, of course, they're, you know, Goethe, America texts, um, not about Ophelia at all, technically, but I think it's really easy for all of those to really be inspired by her character, her experiences. And like you said, I mean, love and despair. And by the time we get to um, Verborgenheit by Wolf, that's kind of the beginning of her decline. Up until then, it's kind of a tumble of different emotions, and it's all pretty contained. But by the time Verborgen comes, las o velto, las mich sein, let me, let o world, let me be, that's kind of when, yeah, she starts to really unravel. So that's just, you know, another, again, another kind of narrative thing that we created for ourselves to have it not only make sense, but feel more, um, more kind of glued together in a, with an idea. I was also thinking of, about the voice of Ophelia and the fact that actually in this song, you represent at one point, I think, the voices of the king and the queen reacting yes. as well. Yes, so in Ophelia's Lament by Alison Bald, I'm doing a lot of singing, the, as I said, the monologue in Shakespeare's Hamlet, but there's also spoken parts. I will be playing the role of the king and the queen. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit, you know, schizophrenic, kind of playing these different characters at the same time. But uh, yeah, it's really exciting. Hope you enjoy. We will. Well, let me run through uh, the titles of these just briefly. I'll mm -hmm. uh, give the titles in translation for our audience. The uh, first song that we'll hear is uh, Wolf's song Koi in translation. And then comes Auf dem See or On the Lake by Schubert. The uh, third song is another Wolf song, and that uh, title and translation is Converted. And then we have another Schubert song, the uh, second Sodaika song. Then comes, uh, I believe, Verborgenheit, right, mm -hmm. of Wolf. And then the Alice in Bold Ophelia's Lament. And finally, Nacht und Trauma of Schubert.
Reden zu meinem Leben, spreche sanft zu deinem Herzen, doch den Eiten zu betrüben und verbirge meine Schmerzen. Reden zu meinem Leben, spreche sanft zu deinem Herzen, doch den Eiten zu betrüben und verbirge meine Schmerzen. Sag's bescheiden, seine Liebe sei mein Leben. Freudiges Gefühl von beiden, freudiges Gefühl von beiden.
beauteous majesty of Denmark. How now, Ophelia? How should I, your true love, know from another one by his cockle hat and scarf and his sandal shoon? Alas, sweet lady, what imports this song? Say you! Nay, pray you, Mark. He is dead and gone, lady. He is dead and gone. He is dead and gone, lady. At his heels a stone. Nay, but Ophelia, pray you mock. White is shroud as the mountain snow. Alas, look here, my lord. Lord, it with sweet flowers, which be wept. To the graveyard did go with true love showers. How do you do, pretty lady? Well, God yield you. They say the owl was a baker's daughter. Lord, we know what we are. Know not what we may be. God be at your table. Conceit upon her father. Pray you, let's have no words of this. But when they ask you what it means, say you this. St. Valentine's Day, all in the morning be time, and I am made at your window to be your Valentine. Then up she rose and donned his clothes and up the chamber door, that in the maid that out the maid never departed more. Pretty Ophelia, indeed, la! Without an oath, I'll make an end of it. By his and by Saint Charity, alack and fie for shame. Young men will do it. They come to it. By cock, they are to blame. 
quoth she before you tumbled me, you promised me to wait. So would I had done by yonder sun. And thou hadst not come to my bed. How long has she been like this? I hope all will be well. We must be patient. But I cannot choose but weep to think they should lay him in the cold ground. Mm. My brother shall know of it. So I thank you for your good counsel.
a set of seven songs performed for us this evening, live from WFMT, by soprano Meredith Volgemuth and pianist Jenny Park. The first three songs, utilizing texts by Goethe, the first song by Hugo Wolf, Die Sprüde, or Koi in translation, the second song by Schubert, Auf dem See, On the Lake, the third song, again a Wolf song, Die Bekerte, Converted, then more Schubert, the second Sulaika song, that text by Mariana von Willemer, then another Wolf song, Verborgenheit, Seclusion, and that text was by Edward Mirdeke. Then we heard Ophelia's Lament by Alison Bolt, the text, of course, from Shakespeare, and finally a Schubert song, Nacht und Träume, Night and Dreams, that text by Matos van Kolin. We'll hear more from these fine artists in a moment, but we're going to take another break now. Jan? Thank you, Jan. And we are back in the studio with Meredith Volgemut and Jenny Park. How long have you folks been collaborating? Well, I would say uh, about a year and a half, right? Not longer than a year and a half, so it's not really been that long. And you met at Juilliard, probably. We met at Juilliard. Um, technically, though, you, Jenny wasn't a student when I was there, so we met at the Chautauqua Institution. Um, nice place to in meet. In the summers, yeah. It was great. But yeah, we met just, I mean, four, five years ago now, something like that. And did something click immediately? Yes. Yeah. It's really, it's re really quite miraculous whenever, whenever I sing with her, whenever you play with me. It's, it's not really like this with anyone else, at least the feeling. I feel very safe and able to really communicate and connect with her. And there's just... We, we talk about it a lot, like, what is it exactly? You know, what is this that we have? But it is really, we just, like, are in sync. And really, from the first time we um, 
work together, it was like, oh, wow, what is this? This is really <laughs> cool. So, yeah, it's been, it's very different. And it's, yeah. yeah. When we perform, we don't have to look at each other at all. We don't even need a little eye contact or something like that. And then I, we can, I guess we can just feel each other. And then it's amazing. Once you experience that, that there's no way to go back yeah. <laughs> before. And then I think the moment that we felt, we kind of knew that what's, what's uh, our collaboration will be. Mm. And then from there, I think we started doing, um, applying for competitions and then recitals here and there. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know what you're talking about just watching the two of you. Mm. <laughs> no, really. You seem to literally breathe together. That's what, yeah, mm. it's like we're breathing, we breathe together, we, it's like we're breathing the same air and we're just so in sync, yeah. Mm. There's got to be other words for it, but yeah. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Tell us about this uh, little song cycle, and I mean very little, Yes, this by Francis Poulenc. <laughs> yes, very short, very little. This is three songs, uh, Metamorphose by Poulenc with text by Louise de Valmorin. Um... So this uh, text, all of them are by Louise, um, and Poulenc wrote these really in kind of in memory of her at the time when he wrote this. Um, he didn't know if he would ever see her or her husband again. They were uh, stuck in Hungary at the beginning of the Second World War. So these are kind of in memory of her and her, um, how you know what the things that she's written about in her life. Um, so the first song, René de Muette, Queen of the Seagulls, um, a really... A uh, beautiful text. It's not really exactly by you know. It's not about a bird. It's not really about a seagull. Um, it's more about a charming woman. Uh, the second song, "C'est ainsi que tu es." It is thus as you are. Um, a very kind of romantic lyrical song about love, about you know two people's connection. And the third one, "Paganini," named after the virtuosic Paganini. Um, it's a lot of, it's very light, playful, kind of a play on words, a few tongue twisters, but very, just a playful, um, joyful song. Okay. Music by Francis Poulenc.
The three songs in the song cycle Metamorphose by Francis Poulenc. We heard first Queen of Seagulls, then This Is How You Are, and finally Paganini, performed by Meredith Wogemuth and pianist Ginny Park. And we have next music by Ern Copeland from the settings of old American songs. There are ten of these in all. They were written in two sets of five. The first set dating from 1950, and the second from 1952. Aaron Copeland later made orchestral transcriptions of the original music for piano, and he utilized uh, 19th century songs from a number of sources, minstrelsy, folk culture, the church. We're going to hear two songs from the sets, Long Time Ago, which was published in 1837, as adapted by George Pope Morris and Charles Edward Horn, from an anonymous minstrel tune. And then we'll hear At the River, an arrangement of the beloved 1865 hymn tune by Robert Lowry.
We've just heard two of the old American songs by Aaron Copeland, Long Time Ago and At the River, performed by soprano Meredith Volgemuth and pianist Ginny Park. They are our guests tonight, live from WFMT. We're going to take one more break now, and then we'll have one more set of songs, Spanish songs. Jen?
Thank you, Jan. And we're back in the Levin Performance Studio with soprano Meredith Volgamuth and pianist Ginny Park. And we're about to hear some Spanish songs by Fernando Obradors, a 20th century composer. I suppose you can call him 20th century, <laughs> even though he was born in 1897. Mm -hmm. And uh, these songs are not that often heard. Uh, how did you come to them? Well, I think the first time we worked on them, actually, the first time the first time we performed them was at the competition at the Concours in Montreal last summer. We did the last two songs, um, "Del Caballo Más Sutil" and "Chiquitita la Novia." Um, so they're really they're actually very special to us. Uh, this whole set. Um, I don't remember exactly how we found them. I mean, I'd heard of them before, but it's true they're not. They're really not often done. Um, yeah. You're off mic, so they can't hear what you're saying. So if you'd like to read. Yeah, so okay. well, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, yeah. Yeah, what they mean to us. But So um, this is the first volume. There's four. Um, so these seven classical Spanish songs are just the first volume. And um, as far as I know, all of the poets are pretty much anonymous. So um, they're Obrador's, his arrangements of these anonymous po this anonymous poetry. Um, very overall, like very elegant yet playful settings of these um, these texts with a lot of like the typical of the classical Spanish style um, in terms of scales and harmonies and kind of how he uses the voice and piano together. Um, and in general, I mean, as a lot of art song is, I guess, this is the central idea is love. Not just romantic love, though. There's um, a few songs that focus on like motherly love and you know platonic, all kinds of different love. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's a really beautiful set. We have la misola la aureola, al amor, corazón por qué pasáis, el majo celoso, con amor es la mi madre, and then the last two, as I mentioned before, del caballo más sutil and chiquitita la novia, and. Um, especially the last two, like I said, we, we did them at the competition and it's, they're very um, special to us because of those memories from the competition and the, the weeks we were there in Montreal. Um, but when we, you know, when we were getting ready for the finals um, in Montreal, you know, we found out we'd made it through the first round and the semifinals and, okay, we have a few days to get ready for finals and we're kind of thinking like, you know, we're here, obviously, to win. It's a competition. You know, <laughs> you, you do these so you can win something. Right. But it has to be more than that. You know, if it's just about going up there and, and winning, oh, gosh, that just wasn't, it what didn't feel right to us. So... Um, got to have some fun, too. Well, yeah, got to have fun. And, you know, there has to be, it just has to be, for me, when I get up and sing, it's, if I'm thinking about winning or just, you know, being the best or something, it just doesn't doesn't really sit right with me. So... Anyways, we looking through the texts of these, especially the Gabayu Masutil, it's just such a gift. We we kind of thought about it when we're up there performing these. The la these were also the last two songs in the whole competition. These were like our last things to the audience, and you know, all my family was watching, and all these people who were watching us. It was like, okay, these are we're just gonna give these to you. These are our gifts to you, um, kind of our way of showing love. So, anyways, that's kind of. A little bit of the backstory on those, especially the last two, are just very. Um, the idea of generosity and giving is a really big part of this whole set for us. Let's hear them. Okay.
We've just heard music by Fernando Obradores, some of the Spanish classical songs that he wrote. He actually wrote four volumes worth between 1921 and 1941. We heard first My Everything, Loreola, My One and Only, then To Love, followed by Heart, Why Do You Keep Awake During the Nights of Love, then The Jealous Maho, after that, Due to Your Love, Mother, and that was followed by From the Finest Hair, and finally, we heard Tiny is the Bride. With that, we come to the end of this recital by soprano Meredith Volgamut and vocal collaborative pianist Jenny Park, laureates of the 2022 Concours Musical International de Montréal, and if you'd like to know more about these fine artists or about the concours, here are their respective websites. Meredith, Volgamut.com, and Volgamut is spelled W-O-H-L-G-E-M-U-T-H. Ginnypark.com, and her first name is spelled J-I-N-H-E-E. And then ConcoursMontreal.ca spelled C-O-N-C-O-U-R-S, Montreal.ca. By the way, the 2023 Concours will take place from April 22nd to May 4th, and this year it will focus on the violin. If you'd like to see video of tonight's concert, it can be found at WFMT.com or WFMT's Facebook and YouTube channels. Next week's program will feature pianist Rochelle Sennett. My thanks tonight to our wonderful artists and to my co-producer, Louise Frank, as well as to our music producer, Max Lebien, and our production assistant, Ella Pinsloop. I'm Kerry Frumkin, host and producer of these programs, hoping you'll be with us again next Monday night at 8 for more music and performance live from WFMT.